Hi everyone, welcome to Mental Melodies. This is your host, Carmen Bradley. I'm going to start today's episode with a song and I'll tell you why afterward. So this is a Manic Monday, take two. <laughs> already I was just in the middle of a dream I was kissing Valentino by a crystal blue Italian stream well I can't be late because I guess I just won't get paid these are the days when you wish your bed were already made it was just another manic Monday I wish it were Sunday Cause that's my fun day My I don't have to run day It's just another manic Monday Have to catch an early train I gotta be to work by nine And if I had an airplane I still wouldn't make it on time Cause it takes me so long just to figure out what I'm gonna wear Blame it on the train but the boss is already there It was just another manic Monday I wish it were Sunday Cause that's my fun day My I don't have to run day it's just another manic Monday. I'm just going to keep my guitar while I talk for the first segment. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing and listening and following and commenting. Please keep doing those things. Please um, keep sharing if you haven't shared. I don't know how many people are sharing. I have a tendency to not like really check up on those things. I just come here and do my thing and then prepare for the next show. Um, I was reflecting a lot um, after last week, and I guess I could tell you about my process in general. I, I reflect and prep for the episode all week. Pick a song or write a song, practice the guitar, um, practice my singing. There is a lot of work that is going into it, and um, the last couple weeks I've been sharing how I've been feeling pretty run down lately, even to the point of having like breakdowns at work. And if I reflect back on like the first couple episodes and when we first tried to do the reel and I was feeling really overwhelmed, um, I had to really take a step back and reevaluate things, which is something that I said in last week's show. And having that show with Joshua Dagan here was really enlightening for me because it kind of forced me to grow up I think in a sense and to really think about like what I valued and why I'm here and what kind of content I want to put out there and despite all this really positive feedback I'm still at the beginning and I still really really want to grow and so one thing I'm doing is shifting so I can sing at the beginning because what I noticed last week is that um, when I was trying to sing at the end, I was really feeling a lot of things emotionally. And that's something that I needed to be honest about. And especially when I bring a guest on, there is a different kind of exchange of energy that happens. And there were some really heavy things that JD brought up last week. He brought up suicidal thoughts, suicidal attempts, like big shifts in his life existential crises, mental health crises, a long-standing bipolar disorder diagnosis. Um, listening to that is not an easy thing. Um, when I was a therapist, I, I went through these moments where I had to really be honest about how the job was affecting me. And part of the reason why I walked away from that job was because I felt that I had kind of 
gone into it because of my own trauma and I was reliving some traumas um, while I was sitting there with my clients and I wanted to walk away from my own trauma and so much was happening in life in the beginning of the year that it was just it was impossible for me to manage it all and that was the one thing that had to drop and as I was talking to my uncle and he was bringing stuff up about moving away from things that you've given so much time and energy to um, that is really, 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 really challenging. And something that I wrote about in that song sometimes, that was the first original that I played on that show, um, was about this like inner voice. And so the lyrics are sometimes you're pushed harder and harder, sometimes you're told louder and louder. And that really does happen to me when I know that there's something that isn't good for me that I need to let go of. I'll know it for quite some time before I make that decision. And over time, it's gotten easier. I make the decision much more quickly. And I've noticed that when I do make that decision much more quickly, what happens is I find peace much more quickly. Because when you're holding on to things you're not supposed to hold on to, you are feeling, I have been feeling extremely chaotic. And there's all like literally multiple voices in my head. And um, one symptom of it that um, presents a lot like in the therapy room, for example, or just, I don't even just in conversation, if you're, if you're going back and forth a lot about a decision, um, that's often a sign that you need to just walk away from the thing that's causing the problem. And that's an overgeneralization because there's so many things that I could be talking about right now. But the gist of it was that I kind of had this awakening in the last week where I really realized that even though I've said this on my show multiple times, or I was like, music is my thing and I need to focus on it, and I really want to put a lot of energy into this show, um, I wasn't putting as much energy as I wanted to because I was working so much. And so eventually I just like broke down, my body broke down, I had to reevaluate whether or not me calling myself a night owl was me just like making excuses for smoking too much weed at night. And I have in the past just a week shifted my whole day. So it's interesting because when I think about the show shifting from a simple thing, from playing the song at the end to playing at the beginning, it feels like a microcosm of the shift that I did in my life. And I notice things like this all the time where it's like the same thing is happening. It just looks different. So in my life, I have shifted from staying up all night to waking up in the morning and having my time to practice my guitar, learn a new song, write a song, whatever, in the morning. Um, and I had to overcome the first few really terrible, really tumultuous days before I started to feel better. And it's really easy. Um, and again, I feel like that's kind of a microcosm of something that happens when people are trying to heal from mental health issues in general, is that if you don't feel an immediate response or it doesn't change after the first day that you decide to wake up in the morning, then it feels like maybe it's not worth it. And especially when you're in a state of overwhelm, it is really hard to, I think, talk yourself into waiting patiently. And there are so many things that are coming up right now that I realize I've said a lot on the show, but it, it it's so important. And I'm sure as you are watching me, you're going to start watch watching me grow and evolve and change. And I think over time, I'll stop repeating myself once I'm able to move past certain things that I've learned. Like uh, when I say to you that patience is not just waiting, it's being able to be calm while waiting. I'm telling myself that because I'm freaking out and I'm wondering like, what's going to happen with my music and what's going to happen with my show and when am I going to get sponsors and all of these things and am I ever going to be able to save money and not just like throw it all away or give it all away. I have this thing about just like getting things and then giving them away or getting money and giving it away and um, I've learned that that while sometimes that can be like a sign of mania and I need to be sometimes a little less impulsive at the same time, I do very much abide by um, 
a simpler lifestyle. I try to anyway, and these are some of the things that I was learning when I was first learning about yogic philosophy. And I guess that's something that I haven't shared yet is that I think a lot of people think that yoga is just like the postures, but there's a whole almost religion attached to it. And one of the very first things um, that I learned from it was actually this concept of nonviolence, which has guided me for a very long time. Um, and I like it because rather than, um, anyway, I'm going on a tangent, but what I was trying to say was that, oh, this idea of like simplicity and not, not having more than you need has been something that I've been learning about for a very long time. And it's actually something that I, as I've mentioned before, there's like a lot of things that I'm kind of reaping right now to use like biblical language, right? You reap what you sow. And um, planting seeds is something that I have been talking about and I really wanted to continue talking about today. And that was one of those things that I planted also around five years ago. So I told that story last week about like I was on that, I was about to go on a date with my boyfriend at the time and we were on a motorcycle and I had this weird epiphany. I was like, I have to go home because I don't know, I thought I had a million dollar idea. And I think I did and I think in a way I was like living in the future, but I had to like plant that seed. And I, I believe in all of those things. Like I think that you can have visions of your life and I believe I've had very clear visions of my life for a long time. And again, I've stated like it's taken me five years to get to a point where I'm actually seeing those things happen. Like I used to tell my students, I want to be on a TED talk one day and I just like, I just saw myself speaking in front of other people and I saw myself on stages and I saw myself talking about the things that I felt like I couldn't talk about as a kid or couldn't talk about as a teacher or just simply the things that like everybody wants to say um, but you can only say them if you have like a platform for it or something and there are more and more people saying the things that I say you know that's why I see the messages that I do on Instagram and Facebook but I think that every every person is saying it in their own way and so therefore I am saying it because it's my time to say it and I'm saying it in a way that's speaking to the people who are listening to me and I think that that is just such a beautiful thing. So I definitely want to elaborate on planting those seeds and so what I was saying was that um, back in that time, at, shortly after I had that little moment where I set up my studio, I told this story last week, um, but I set up the studio and I, it was basically like I was setting up for this talk show, but I didn't really know that it wasn't happening for five years. And I decorated my wall and I called it the daily intention. And um, I started trying to post stuff on Instagram and it kind of fell through, um, but I still thought about it for a very, very long time. And I kind of worked on it in ways that again, I think were even beyond my comprehension at the time. And one thing that I was forced to do at the time, whereas now I consciously do, is I had to let go of a lot of things because I lost my teaching job and I moved in with that guy and I had to let go of a lot of stuff. And then we moved on a boat and I had to downsize everything. And I started to, I was forced to learn about non-attachment, which is another yogic principle. And so I'm going to pause there and we're going to take a break and I'm going to pick up with that in the next segment. The year is 2980 and we now know that death is not the end. A soul can be extracted from the recently deceased and be used to create a blue liquid called essence. It can bring a person back to life. We'll get her back. I hope so. It's an expensive process used by the rich and powerful. The rest, they do what they can to survive. Stay right there. You told me you're hiding from some dangerous people. Let's knock on the door. I spent the last year searching for the deep star. A bounty so big that the entire galaxy could be yours. People have been looking for the Deep Star for years. It can't be found. It's because they can't find the distress beacon. I know where it is. If we find the Deep Star, we can get enough credits to bring Mom back. Blast off. Guys, we have company. You can run, but you cannot hide. Prepare for impact. Now authorized to take action. And now you die. No! 
It's a tough market. We get it. Home inventory is at an all-time low. It's a seller's market, and cash buyers have the advantage. Recently, cash buyers made up more than a quarter of all home purchases. But we have the solution. New American Funding's Buyer Accepted Program allows your buyers to compete with all cash offers by becoming cash buyers themselves. Here's how it works. Buyer Accepted LLC, an affiliated company of New American Funding, will purchase your buyer's new home with cash and sell it back to them for the original purchase price plus a fee that can be added to the purchase of the home once they secure mortgage financing with New American Funding. The best part is that they don't need to sell their current home first. This is a true cash offer. Clients who use our Buyer Accepted program can secure financing using a conventional loan and even VA. Plus, there are no fees for agents and no sacrificing commissions. Buyer Accepted even offers a free one-hour certification course that will make you the expert. You want to close more deals and help more clients? New American Funding's Buyer Accepted program is the answer. Welcome back. This is the second segment of this episode of Mental Melodies. I am your host, Carmen Bradley. Um, once again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for continuing to watch. Thank you for your support and your comments. I will reiterate this time after time because I just genuinely feel very grateful and um, I feel that gratitude is something that's a part of that kind of catch and release in life. I'm being given a lot and I want to give back a lot. Um, I was talking about this idea of non-attachment and um, I before before that happened, I had this idea this morning that I was like, I feel like I'm going to share some vulnerable stuff on my show today, but I wasn't sure. Um, but anyway, before this like five year period of making like very clear decisions about who I wanted to be and where I wanted to go um, on these like behavioral, emotional, physical levels, like almost the, I, I had to like create the foundation for who I wanted to be on a day to day basis before I could figure out who I wanted to be as like a professional, right? So even before I fully realized, because I had moments when I was living in that boat in Florida where uh, my boyfriend at the time played guitar and I would sing and I wanted to make something of it and I felt very strongly about it and I was like, let's practice. And he just wanted to do it willy nilly and that's fine, but for me, I just I just had this sense that there was something that needed to happen and um, there was like live music happening in Florida and I was just picturing myself there and then I when I ended up moving to Las Vegas I was supposed to move in with my mom actually and she lives in Idaho and last minute I just had this idea and I texted my grandpa <laughs> It's like, I'm moving in with you. Like, I'll be there in a couple of days. And, and it happened. And I came here and one thing led to another. And now I see so clearly why it all had to happen that way. It's just insane. Um, but anyway, I was talking about this idea of non-attachment. So prior to, like I said, that these moments where I started to like really make a decision and, and start to really develop my own autonomy, like I felt like in my early 20s, I was not really in charge of what I was doing. Um, I was experiencing a lot of the stuff I've been experiencing in the last few weeks, but more intense and all of the time, day after day. Woke up feeling terrible, went to bed feeling terrible, was having panic attacks at work, like couldn't control my emotions, was crying all the time, didn't have very good boundaries, couldn't maintain a relationship, all of these things. Um, and I had a hoarding problem, which actually started, I think when I was a, a kid, because I was never very good at organizing things. And my mom used to call me the disorganized genius, which has been something that has kept me going because I'm like, well, if my mom said it, it must be true. And there's so many big things that I want to do that I, I have to go back to my childhood and, and validate that some of these things 
were like there from the start you know like there's this question that people ask or that I've asked like who were you before the world got to you and not a lot of us have a lot of memories of who we were when we were three or four you know or two or one and that's something that having like nieces and nephews I start to see that people really do have like different personalities and so there's that nature nurture argument of like who are you versus how were you like what made you and I've talked about this in the show before like why going back to that part of your life and really thinking through it and even like psychologically delving into those memories is so important because what you can do over time is you can start to shed away all the things that that made you who you were and you can start to become more of who you actually are and I believe that there is there is something for everybody that is who they really are, you know? And and I also think that, that 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 could change and that you have to give yourself permission to let that change. And that's something that I, again, I've been thinking about this last week, like with reevaluating how to spend my time and how much energy to devote to the things that, like maybe something that isn't making me money right now, but that I believe will make me money later. Why should I dedicate to it? just because I believe that I should, just because it, it is growing, just like all of these things. And it's not even a just, it's true that all of these things are happening. Um, so with the hoarding thing, I was talking about like not being able to organize as a child and I was always highly intellectual, but my space was something I couldn't figure out. I went my mom told me to clean my room. It was like I was the stuff, the stuff in the closet kind of girl. It just didn't really matter to me that I knew where my bras were or whatever. And I was also that person, and I know plenty of people I think can relate to this, where I felt like I could find stuff better if I were a mess. Like, ah, if you clean my room, mom, then I don't know where that thing was that was hiding under that chair on top of that thing, you know? And so I had to, in the last five years of my life, literally teach myself how to do these like grown-up things and I think that that's something that that maybe did fall short in my childhood and I hesitate to blame my mom because I love her so much and I'm past that stage of my life and <laughs> but she didn't teach me she was too nice to me she let me be messy and like packed for me every single time that we moved to a different house and did all of these things for me that I think I needed to learn how to do on my own but at the same time I'm sure I was probably I know I was I have some memories of <laughs> things I was really stubborn about like I at a very early age I decided I was gonna do my own laundry and I would get too angry at my mother if she did my laundry and I would freak out about things like that which is why I as I think about my childhood I start to want to diagnose myself on the autism spectrum or like I want some kind of an answer for it like why was I the way that I was kind of thing and I think that that those things are valid but at the same time I I want to get out of that realm in a sense and that's something I was having trouble with over last week's episode because one thing I did want to do is give JD space to tell his story in his way and to state his perception of mental health in his way and I was actually slightly surprised by his answer when he was talking about if you watched last week um, he was talking about humanity versus mental illness. I don't know if it was really like a competition, but he was talking about how um, I had asked him, like, how do you get out of those stages and when do you decide, like, this could be in my control? So he was talking about depressive stages where you, you just can't get up off the couch, right? Like, I literally just can't. And he was saying things like, I, I need some type of commitment or job, which for him is photography right now. And if you need headshots, look him up, Joshua Dagan, um, or anything, photo shoots, all that. He's absolutely amazing. Um, but anyway, we were talking about that, that control that you have over these things. And I had been in, uh, very adamant from the beginning of the show that one thing I want to state is that healing is real and that I think that mental health diagnoses are very limiting and that they often um, become forever when they don't have to be. Now, when I 
think about obviously some of the stuff that he brought up about like bipolarity for example and the evidence that it could exist in young children you have to wonder like okay where do you find the balance between the things that maybe you're born with versus the things that come out of trauma and I just had such a strong belief that everything that stemmed from trauma that that you could essentially go deep and and take a really long time and heal from all of those things and then it wouldn't be the case anymore and I had seen evidence of that in my life I think but what came up for me the last few weeks was this that humanity aspect I think that he brought up where I had to be honest with myself about my own limitations and I've talked about being honest about your limitations and figuring them out so that you can rise above them yes but I, I cannot like work 40 hours a week, spend 40 hours a week on my music and all of these things, start a band and go do modeling gigs and go do acting gigs and maintain friendships and call my mom and my dad and walk my dog. I can't do all of those things. I know that because I tried to do all of those things in the last few weeks and I lost it. <laughs> I was angry and irritable and I was crying at work and like wanting to call out. I could not, literally could not manage all of those things. So I've been kind of like evaluating that and obviously I think one conclusion I have is that to some extent we're just expected to do too much, you know, and and I guess I, I wonder sometimes like when that sort of thing happens to me, like, am I just the one that can't handle it? Am I just the one who can't do all of it and I'm the one having breakdowns at work? Or like, is everyone not able to manage what life expects of us and like, people are just not talking about it, you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, I know there's, there's more for me to learn and I know that I'm going to continue to learn from my guests who are coming on the show too because I had, I studied um, I have a master's in counseling. Obviously, I couldn't be a therapist without that. Um, and I studied that for seven years while I was going through all of my mental health issues. And I had a suicide attempt of my own in that time. And there was all of this crazy stuff happening. So I, I know a lot and I've read a lot. But I also have really strong opinions that I know are biased from my own experiences. And so I think something that I've noticed that I guess I didn't really realize at the beginning of the show is that a lot of the stuff I'm going to be like learning as we go along and that my opinions will probably change and I think that that is awesome. I don't want to be the kind of person who you know makes a definitive statement in episode one when I'm just trying and then I can't I can't change my mind or I can't grow in that and I think that if if I can't then you can't either you know and I know that a lot of the things that I brought up are probably things that are things people haven't talked about before. And so your minds have to be open to that. So I want to keep an open mind to all of those things. Um, next week, I'm going to bring on another guest. And I've been thinking about the frequency of that, but I'm kind of just letting that go with the flow. But like I said, I want to be able to like hear other people's stories and learn from them. I also know to... Um, to a degree that it is a very healing experience for them. And I know that, like I said last week when I was sitting here with JD and he was sharing things, he was experiencing you know, emotions that came up. Um, I want to make sure that I'm helping my guests to manage those emotions. So that's something that I've been thinking about. Um, I did want to do another disclaimer, which I did in the beginning of the show, that I'm not on this show as a mental health therapist, and that's mostly because, well, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but I just I just have to disclaim that because um, if it grows, when it grows even bigger, I want people to know, you know, you're coming on the show. I do have that experience. It will possibly feel that way. JC, when he came on, was like, I feel like I'm in therapy right now. So it can feel that way, but think of me more like 
like okra and not a <laughs> Nevada state licensed therapist. I do not want to get into long-term relationships with clients again where I feel responsible for them um, or where I can't have a relationship with them either. That is not what I want. However, I do believe that I have skills and understanding and the ability to sit with people empathetically that I can use on this show. So again, as like a shout out to people who are maybe thinking about stories they want to share or things that they want to benefit from, um, maybe think about that um, reminder to reach out to me individually if you want to come on. And I'm going to take a little bit of a break right now, and I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Traditional TV is going away. Hollywood is starting to fade. People are demanding real stories from real people. Our voices are now being heard in our own way. Podcasts, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok Live are becoming the norm. Internet TV has now reached the highest demand in human history. Social Media Shows is now the new media of the century. Hi, I'm Deacon T with Modern Word Ministries. It's great to be with you today. Just a short little promo for our show. Every Sunday morning we have service and you can follow us at 10 a.m. Pacific Time on modernwordministries.org. And if you missed us or you want to see some of our older messages, go ahead and check us out on socialmediashows.com every single morning at 9 a.m. It's a great way to kick off your day, get a little bit of the word in you, get something uplifting, get you started off on your way. You know, if you're looking for prayer or you need some help, reach out to us. If you go to our website, again, that's modernwordministries.com, Org, you can interact with me via telephone, via DM, text message, whatever you want. I'll get right back to you. So if you need prayer, you need help, you just need somebody to talk to, Modern Word Ministries is here for you. We are your church in the community. So until you see you next time, be blessed, everybody. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the third segment of this episode of Mental Melodies. This is your host, Carmen Bradley. I am experiencing a little bit of a blank mind, which is not common for me. But I did have a thought about planting seeds, and I know that was something that I wanted to bring up. And I brought up briefly. Um, and so it, it ties into what I've been talking about over past episodes about, you know, like um, manifesting things. And, um, yeah, I guess I had, I had been planting seeds in the last couple of weeks and I had this like interesting thing happen where every word started with the letter M. Um, I'm not relying on my notes anymore, so I don't know if I remember each of them, but one of them was mornings because I talked about I had to get my mornings back. I absolutely had to <laughs> because otherwise I would have totally lost it. Um, and then music, obviously. So there was mornings, music, memories. There was a bunch more, but they all started with the letter M and so does mental melodies. So I thought that was really cool. And it's just funny how things like all come together. Um, but one thing that I did think about, um, I had this like image. I'm always like manically writing things down as I prep throughout the week. And I had this kind of like this image of when I'm how do I, let me backtrack. I think I've talked about this before, but the idea of manifestation, um, one of the techniques, there's different ways to phrase it. And again, everybody says it like in their own way. So I hope that like, again, I'm saying it because people need to hear about it because they haven't heard it or they need to hear it again, or I need to hear it again. But there's this idea that you, you are in that moment now. So I am a billion dollar record holder now. I am an actress on Netflix now. I am a stand-up comedian who travels around the world now. I have a talk show host on a big network now. And you feel those things in the moment. And that is so very valid and that is the way that it works. And there are so many people um, reiterating that and proving that. Jim Carrey is one of my 
favorite celebrities who talks about manifestation. And he said there was something I saw of him the other day where he said he like wrote himself a million dollar check um, for being in a movie. And I can't remember the timeline, but it wasn't that long afterward that he got that money for being an actor. And he talks about how his dad um, was in, I can't remember what it was, but he basically was a really excellent musician, but he didn't want to believe that it could go anywhere. And so he stayed in his like blue collar job for his whole life. And Jim Carrey, his son, watched him um, not be happy. And I'm not saying that you have to have crazy big dreams like I do in order to be happy. I think that you have to find your own purpose and create your own happiness, but I do think that it would behoove you to stay somewhere that you don't want to be, whether that's a relationship or a job or a reality or a home or a place. Um, if you if you do have a feeling inside of you, if you have that voice pushing, you know, speaking louder and louder, and you have that thing like pushing harder and harder in your head, if you're not listening to that, then I think that at that point, that's a choice. If you're aware of something inside of you telling you you're meant for more or that there's some kind of change that needs to be made. Like, and so I was talking about in the beginning of the episode, like it took me, it used to take me a really long time. And it only took me a few days to when I really noticed that that staying up till five in the morning working on my music was not the way to go and that really what I was doing was feeding into fear and what I needed to do was rest at night and I had to continue to tell myself that rest is productive which is a message that I think you really have to tell yourself over and over again especially when you're stuck in that rat race so I in the last couple days I looked at every single day in November and December and had zero days for rest zero so I had to, again, evaluate what do I need to take away? What can I take away? And how can I do this without being led by fear? And this is something I remember talking about in early episodes that I haven't brought up very much lately about deciding what's going to drive you. And I had stated that I didn't want to be driven by fear and I didn't want to be driven by guilt. And so I, I, hadn't, I didn't even really think about that until now, but I know that that's kind of what was driving me in the last few weeks was like fear of not having enough money or you know thinking ahead to like is my current gig at the sphere not going to last a long time and just being really afraid of that instead of being in the moment and trusting in the moment so that brings me back to what I was saying about manifestation where yes you have to step forward and you have to believe in your visions like I believe very strongly that there are things that are going to happen for me that that I I only saw glimpses of like five years ago, right? And I'm telling you now, like I, I see those coming to light. Um, but there's also the very, the very, I don't want to say real reality, but that's what came out. The very real reality of the present moment. So I can be manifesting that, you know, and I can sit back and I can feel that I've gotten to the place that I want to be, but I can't just sit in meditation forever or you know, like write down long-term plans every single day. I also have to manage my Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, my life that is now. And I, and I have to be able to um, accept that while I'm feeling those things and while I'm feeling them more and more and more, I'm still not there yet. And that's one of the most difficult things. And it's almost, it's almost, I guess every stage has its own difficulty but in a way it's almost harder when you're closer because back then when I was just planting seeds five years ago and I was like kind of joking about it but I was serious to my students where you know we were watching a movie and I was like I'm gonna be in a movie one day and like you're gonna see me up there and I had started singing more at Don't Tell Mama down on Fremont and I was telling them like I'm gonna be a singer and then they watched me like get hired at Don't Tell Mama as a sub they they watched me say it and then do it and follow through on it and they watched it happen and as as a teacher I felt my most important role was to be a role model and I thought that that was so important and even leaving the profession with all the guilt that comes with that I believe was something that those students needed to see too because one day they might be in a profession they chose when they were 18 and they might think back on the fact that Miss Bradley left the teaching profession even though that's scary and decided to do something else and I again like if you have that voice telling you it's time to move on it's time to move on 
Um, and maybe it's not time until the time that you decide. I don't know, I've been thinking about that too. Um, um, but anyway, yeah, you have to manage that very real reality. And so, like I said, like five years ago, there were a lot of things that I was thinking and seeing, but there, I was, I was like pretty excited about being in the moment. And I was just like, man, it'll happen. And it'll be, it'll be so far away. And I believed in it. But now that it's closer, it's almost like there's more pressure, I think, in a sense, because it's like, I have to keep up with the fact that I said I was going to do all of these things. And um, I know myself and I know that I couldn't give up on it. Um, I don't see myself ever like losing my music, but there are moments where I'm just like, I wonder, I wonder like why I can't just like why I couldn't just teach for 30 years and like collect retirement or whatever. And I guess that brings me back to like what I was saying about when you're, when you're a kid and like who you are before the world got to you. Like maybe I, maybe I was literally born to be something and you know like maybe the the little first grader that said she was going to be a pop star knew that then you know because kids are more connected to their intuition um so yeah i just think that that is very interesting i'm drawing a blank again i think i'm just processing um that's something that i did want to i guess address today in um I didn't explain why I sang in the beginning instead of the end, I don't think. And um, maybe I did. But anyway, I'll elaborate a little bit because I was noticing that I was giving a lot of energy. And even right now, I'm still not quite like recovered from the last few weeks. I was running on adrenaline quite a bit. And so I was doing a lot and I really did have a lot of energy, but it wasn't like natural energy. And my body is slowly starting to say like, we need to hibernate. <laughs> and I also believe that we do too much in the winter in general. I believe very much in like seasonal shifts. And that's something I also learned from yogic philosophy. There's a, um, a, I don't know if it's a philosophy or an approach, but it's called Ayurveda, and it's a way of seeing how the seasons affect you, um, and also how eating seasonally can help you to feel more connected, right? And so, like, the winter is a time to slow down, so the fact that I have zero rest days planned, I plan to them now, kind of, <laughs> I'll get there, um, but that's not, that's not healthy ever, and definitely not, like, when things slow down, and it's really time to kind of, like, reflect on the year, and one thing I was thinking about, too, was just the, the very quick, sudden shift that I had from my life over the summer, I've mentioned on this show before that I had, um, a very quick marriage and a very quick divorce, and it was very, very intense, um, I was in New York and it all blew up and I was supposed to be focusing on acting and singing and performing and I like hadn't really slept and I had been like working seven days a week for a couple of months and um, the, I moved out September 1st. And since then, it was like I didn't even look back. I did process the story. I did talk about it. I did write a song about it. I did share it to all of my followers. Um, but at the same time, I you know, I didn't like sit in it any longer. Once it was time to move on, I did. And I started pursuing things that I wanted to pursue and focusing on myself. And I was um, really allowing a lot of mantras to kind of keep me through that time. And I had a lot of just angels in my life, people that came and told me things that I needed to hear about how to not get distracted and, and how to be selfish, because that is something that as a giving person, I've had to learn. Um, and I really had to protect my energy and my space and take care of myself and, and find like my health again. Um, so yeah, I was talking about singing at the end and um, just thinking about like these episodes and how they they really are a giving of energy I think and I do need to rest like after them and when people come on there is something that kind of happens within me when I am with somebody else and when I'm sharing that space um, and it was, it's kind of hard to describe but like as a therapist when I would see multiple people a day I felt like I would go through this thing with them um, and there are empaths in the world and I am one of them. And so that's one trick I kind of had to learn was to be able to be a vessel for something. So rather than holding on to somebody's sadness or grief or whatever it is they're feeling with me, I could give them space to feel it and maybe even feel it 
in my own body but let it pass through me but what happens when I'm not resting enough is that I, I kind of hang on to that heaviness and it's like I don't have the strength to take it on and also let it go and so I really have to think about um, if I want this to be beautiful and professional and effective and I and I want it to lead to great changes in mental health in our community and in schools then I'm going to need to take care of myself so I can continue to show up with all of the energy that I want to give what I want to give um, so we have one more segment which means we have one more break see you in a couple of minutes Got Films is a full-service production company that provides motion picture quality content and production services for use in the film and TV industry. Looking for a seasoned crew, high-quality equipment, or other production services for your film, TV, commercial, corporate convention, sports, news, or interview project? Your search stops here. Some of our projects include NASCAR, American Restoration, Pawn Stars, Counting Cars, Top Chef, BattleBots, Forge and Fire, and Street Outlaws. We have also produced over 60 feature films and documentaries. We're ready for all your needs. Whatever your project, whatever your budget, big or small, Got Films got you. GotFilms.com John is an employee at one of the most famous firms in the city of New York. So his job is very hectic, and he realized that it is necessary for him to go and finally take a vacation. But he went on a vacation without planning out the details, and wasn't able to truly enjoy where he went because he had to think about so many things that he didn't plan for. Instead of enjoying his time away from work, he came back with more stress that he was not able to take full advantage of his vacation. But this year, a coworker suggested him to try World Ventures this time to make his vacationing more enjoyable and less stressful. They do not require you to plan anything outside of your transportation, which is also available at discounted rates. Your stay, your transport, and many meals are planned by the club. John liked the idea very much. He tries World Ventures and his experience with the club was amazing as he made many friends there with whom he had a great time. John recommends that everyone should try this club, as they are the best in business. See how the VIP-Vacation-Club.com can give you the right experience without all the hassle. Enjoy the VIP experience that only World Ventures provides. Welcome back, everyone. This is the last segment of this episode of Mental Melodies with your host, Carmen Bradley. Um, I was talking about like why I switched from singing at the end to singing in the beginning and why I switched from staying up all night to waking up in the morning and all these different things and I think like the gist of today is that that you need to be honest with yourself um, again about those limitations I think so that you can rise above them like I've said but so that also you can feel healthy and happy and calm and I do not like feeling frantic you know it's I love I love being busy and having a lot of things and meeting a lot of new people and making a lot of money. I love making money because I love to spend money. <laughs> um, but also give and there are so many things I want to do with money. I, I just keep throwing that out into the universe because, yes, anyway, I think it has something to do with like, I, I, I talked about like microcosms in the beginning and I'm not sure you understand that because it's one of those things that just like sometimes I have half-baked ideas, you know, just like my visions in the five years ago, I, I knew that they meant something but now I understand it kind of thing. Um, but I was talking about like taking on someone's emotions and being able to kind of be a vessel and I think that there are people in this world who like are meant to have a lot of responsibility because they will do good things with it. Like I think about Monday's Dark um, this concert that's held on Mondays at the space and um, there's just so many people there that are they have a lot of money and they give a lot of money and they care about kids and they care about mental health and they care about autism and that's something that I want to do in the future to partner with them so that I can make some of these visions happen for mental health in schools and stuff and lately I guess I've been 
a little bit a little bit stressed like I said when you're when you're closer to where you want to be it feels a little bit overwhelming because I'm wondering like is this the time to pull the trigger on that specific thing or am I living too much in the future and it goes back to that idea that you need to manifest by feeling that you are what you want to be but you also have to manage the moment and with that comes like understanding when there might be an idea that you have and you might need to follow through on it now or you might need to follow through on it later which means also as simply like maybe not stay up all night maybe do it in the morning or maybe not do it this year um maybe do it next year and that's something that i was talking about in the last segment of just um, I didn't finish my thought, but my thought was that I needed to give myself some grace because I had gone through all of that craziness in the summer. And then I just stepped into this new life and and took one step after the other towards my dreams. And it's been challenging, but it's been it's been lovely. And I I've had this habit since like five years ago when I started doing all these things, which I'll get to over time. Um, but I was really thinking about how to spend my time. Um, and a lot of my freakouts would happen in a moment of like, I just didn't know what to do. Um, do I like, do I clean this thing? Do I write this thing? Do I work on my teaching? Whatever it was. And you have to rid yourself of a lot of clutter in order to be able to get to the point where you can feel that in every moment you are focusing on what you're doing rather than being frantic. And it kind of goes back to what I've said about like ADHD before and how you manage that. And I think part of it is, because I know I had this like attachment to things as a child that is very ADHD-like that I think some people can relate to. Like if I loved something, I loved it. Like I had 50, 100 Tweety Bird things. I had a shirt and I had a stuffed animals and I had bed sheets and all of these things. And then at some point I was obsessed with Despicable Me and I had 50,000 minion things and I love frogs. I still do. I have two pet frogs. But instead of having a pet frog and a million frog stuffed animals like I did as a child, I just have two frogs. And I can like manage that like love that I have for something and there's this like emotional intensity I think that comes with ADHD or a mental illness or something and that's something that I wanted to talk about kind of going back to that um, like what happened last week when I realized that I'm too tired at the end of an episode to sing a song I need to start with the song and then talk because I'm just giving all this energy away and I'm glad that I didn't, I wanted to get hung up on, oh, like you forgot your words and this feeling that like I would always forget them. And I knew that wasn't true. And standing here in front of you feeling more grounded after the last week, I know that I'm capable of doing what I say I'm going to do. But you have to not be tired in order to be able to do the things you're capable of doing. And that is like just a, a simple truth. Um, but something that one of my coworkers was saying to me when I was like, bubbling up at work. I did a pretty good job of, I, I, I went there, um, maybe you've been to the sphere and you've seen me, maybe not, but I stand in front of the robots and I help people talk to the robots, which is why I got these heeled shoes because I have more authority, I feel like. <laughs> and people will ask me, can I talk to the robot instead of just cutting in? And I feel very much like a teacher again sometimes, which is kind of cool. Um, but anyway, there was two days there where I was standing there and my emotions were so strong that I was literally fighting back tears and I would have to like turn away and kind of like do this with my eyes and then look forward. And I don't think that you should be at work when you're feeling that way. But one of my coworkers was saying to me, like, I, I know that you have had this history of like being a therapist and doing yoga and you know how to regulate your emotions. So I like wasn't really worried about you, but then at the same time I was. And that I kind of took that to heart because I was thinking about all the things I know how to do to manage my emotions, like deep breath work or whatever. But I, like again, to reiterate, you just because you know how to do those things doesn't mean they're going to work if there are so many things fighting against you. So I might know how to regulate my emotions, but I couldn't because there were so many unhealthy choices that I was making that I needed to reevaluate. So when it comes to like emotional regulation, I had this thought about like making sure that I kind of integrate that into episodes when I bring people on. Um, Cause I was talking 
about when I had clients and um, one thing that you have to make sure to do that if you're in therapy and this isn't happening please request it that you start with something grounding like a few breaths and you end with something grounding because a lot of the reason why people don't go back to therapy is because what it does is it actually activates them so they go this is what happened to me when I was in college and I, I wanted to start to talk about some of the stuff that had happened to me. For one thing, I think it was a little too soon, right? I was like 18 and I went from having a lot of structure to having no structure. Um, but I would go to try and talk about some of the things that happened not that long ago in my childhood. And I just felt awful. Like, I don't want to talk about these things. I want to finally like live my life and be away from it. And so I didn't go back. And what that did is it led to a buildup of things and there were things happening that again I've talked about how like in my early 20s I, I really felt like I wasn't in control very much and interestingly enough I was forcing a lot of control and that's like where I think I mentioned this in the first episode about how like an eating disorder and OCD and all of these things are a way to control because you feel like you haven't had control. You're addicted to chaos, so you're trying to control things, but you're controlling the wrong things. I don't need to be counting calories every single day, right? I, I don't need to be going to the gym seven days a week. I don't need to be worried that I don't have a six pack or like thinking constantly about how fat I feel. And I felt that for so many years where that would, there was this like loud banging thought at all times about what I had eaten that day, how I had eaten too much, how I looked fat in my outfit, how I could feel that I was fat. All of these thoughts, boom, 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 boom. Like, I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but I, I guess I'm trying to explain it to people who maybe haven't. And it is insane. <laughs> like you have this whole life built around your body and your body image and how nobody thinks that you're pretty and you don't think you're pretty and everything is wrong with you and you're thinking about all that while you're also teaching high school and doing all the things that you have to do to be a person that is insane but that's a way that you are trying to find control so I think like when you think about what my uncle was saying about getting stuck in these like depressive episodes often I believe that that deep depression happens because you're running on that kind of like adrenaline like I have been in the last couple weeks whether it's an eating disorder or OCD and you're trying to control things and eventually your body is like bro like, you have to stop and it will shut you down and so like you said you can't you can't get up you can't do anything um, and so that's where I think there's a lot to be said about managing like manic and depressive episodes and for me what that's been is this this belief that that those are more the natural shifts in our life and that like like if you follow the seasons and the moons like i don't i don't even feel i need to disclaim that anymore right you you get more tired in the winter like if you're a woman for example if you follow what happens to you when you're on your menstrual cycle it's like there's going to be a couple weeks where you need a little more rest and there's going to be a couple weeks where you're feeling like a little more energy and um Anyway, these, these are a lot of things where I feel like I'm getting into further episodes because um, I guess I want to close it in a little bit more just about today and that like being honest. And um, when I think on like college times, like I brought up trying to go to therapy and stuff, there were some stories that came up in my mind that I thought I might share. I don't think I have time necessarily to share them, um, but I... I want to go back to this idea um, that I mentioned in the first and second episode about this duality. Like, healing is real, and just because I'm told I have an eating disorder doesn't mean I have to have one forever. Now, there are mental disorders that, like I said, you know, could be there from childhood and you have to manage them. But again, that goes back to like managing your limitations. But I, I also believe in, in choice. And like I said, if, if there's something telling you you need to like leave something and you're not listening to it, you're making a choice. So I could continue to make the choice these last couple weeks to live in fear and to pursue my day-to-day -day habits because I'm afraid of these things. Or I can make a choice to feel that fear and and sit back and and change these small things I know I need to change because I know in the long run they will lead me to where I want to go and that all that you're doing 
when you're staying in those, it's like you're running in circles, right? You're not making any progress. And I think that's something we really have to think about. So I've had to let go of a lot of things in the last couple of weeks, like a person and lots of clothes. I'm constantly just like purging stuff because I just don't want any of that. Like, I don't want any of my illnesses or negativity to be following me into like the next stage of my life. But again, there's that, there's that balance where so I guess I will bring it up. I brought it up before, but I was diagnosed with lupus in 2013, and it's this um, autoimmune disease. And um, something that I, I decided earlier this year was that I would stop focusing on illness. And that's one of those manifestation tricks where you stop focusing on illness and then you can get healthy. But then I'm starting to feel things come up and you... And it's like I, I'm not in a space where lupus is my identity anymore, but I am in a space where I can say to myself, I cannot work as many hours as this person, and that is okay. And that's where, like, you know, everybody's different, and that's cool, and we can all manage our own stuff. Anyway, um, that is it for today's episode. Um, please follow me on Instagram, Carmen underscore Bradley. Please also follow Mental Melodies Talk Show. I'm working on some stuff in the background right now so that we can kind of grow that platform, but just follow it and share it when you see videos, share them, follow social media shows, um, and email admin at social media shows if you want to sponsor and um, please specify you want to sponsor Mental Melodies and if you want to be on my show you can reach out to me through Facebook or Instagram or you can email me um, carmenbradley at gmail.com and yes any like professional things that you want to work with me on whether it be modeling or acting also you can reach out to me through Facebook and Instagram or singing if you want to see more of that, let me know. And I will see you next week. Thank you for being here. I love all of you. Valentino by a crystal blue Italian stream. Well, I can't be late because I guess then I just won't get paid. These are the days when I wish my bed was already made. It was just another manic Monday.